This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. You're listening to the final cast on the Panel and Sin Podcast Network. I'm your host, Brad. Uh, got Jimmy Skinner in the house with me tonight. How you doing, man? Pretty good, man. What's going on? Good to be back. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm excited to have you on. Uh, you've always wanted to come on the show, too. I, you, you were a guest, but you're like, man, I want to do that show with you sometime. So oh, yeah, here, dude. I, here's you your chance. to talk my favorite thing, and that's gear. Like, yeah. It's what I need to talk about is stuff I spend money on. So, Heck, yeah. Well... We we got a John Thomas from Yak Gadget back on for another episode to talk about his new products, and uh, of course, me and you used quite a few of their products, so it's gonna be a fun oh, yeah. one. Uh, uh, he keeps coming out with much, you know, other stuff. There's not gonna be much anything else on my boat. Like I'm already yeah. looking for places to put stuff as it is. Yep. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the show, John. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. It's good to see you guys again. And uh, I think we last talked, what what was it? Was it May? Was it like the end of May? or? It feels like longer than that. <laughs> I know. See, I oh. thought it was closer than that. It, but this year, as bad as it's been, has flown. Yeah. It really, like, and I'm okay with that. It's been insane. I mean, you know, you look up and it's like two months have gone by and I feel like Rip Van Winkle. I really feel like we're in a parallel like dimension right now. <laughs> That's what well, my customer said it the other day. He was like, you realize we're closer to Christmas than we are when COVID started? And I was yep. like, oh, jeez. Oh. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, so, hopefully. You... We'll... Oh, we'll sorry. Let... No, no, no. You're good. Go ahead. Well, you, you were a guest on the show once already, so everybody knows who you are. So I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Uh, Give the listeners three things that they don't know about you that you didn't say on the first episode. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it got me on the spot now. Oh, frozen. Uh, um, uh, I actually like what I do, even though I pretend I don't. <laughs> uh, like, I, I do like the fish, even though I don't get to. I was just about to say you could tell people that you actually do fish because I know you don't have time to get here, here, here's on Here's one. Here's one. Favorite sports team? Oh, I'd say Tennessee Titans. I mean, they're they're in my they're in my backyard, so I got a. I was a Pittsburgh Steelers fan forever, and uh, it and and still am. But the the Titans have they've warmed their way in the into my heart over the last twenty something years. So Are you a uh, hockey fan at all? I am. I'm definitely a Preds fan. Definitely Thank a Preds. You. Okay. Fan. You said Penguins. I was going to end the show very quickly. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not bitter. I mean, after 2017, after we had our miracle run and they ended it. Yeah. It Let's go, Pens. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, it's a stacked team, man. I'm not. I, I love the Preds. I'm not a. I'm not a. Like, I wouldn't say I have like a favorite team because I'm a player fan. So. Yeah. And the only team I hate is the Capitals because I don't like Alexander Ovechkin. Yeah, or Tom Wilson. Jeez. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, he seems like somebody I just want to punch in the mouth. <laughs> I don't think you're alone. I don't. I don't think you're alone. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, that's cool. I mean, that's like the second time I've done that, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, we're gonna jump into some products, man. You you've released quite a few products for uh, New Canoe, a bunch of different. Uh, other products that we're going to talk about tonight um start off with the cup holder like yeah you went over it with us uh before we started the show but um yeah g- give us a little background on that so um you know i guess they say necessity's mother of invention so uh, we had a lot of dealers and a lot of customers kind of asking us for more track mounted accessories and and it was always kind of part of the plan to get into track mount gear, track mounted accessories, and more universal products. I mean, we've we've really kind of prided ourselves on making a lot of kayak specific products, like 
for different models that other people don't have or haven't made. Or, but but we really wanted to also make a lot of universal stuff, and we went in with the crate and the trays and those things. And now that's kind of led us down this whole road of track mounted accessories. So when we originally kind of planned out what we were going to make, the cup holder was a big part of it, as was the phone holder, the, the quick grip cell phone holder. That Those were two products that we knew we wanted to concentrate on first. And, and we did that. Um, the cup holder was also something that a lot of our dealers really wanted mm -hmm. um, just because of COVID and the, the scarcity of getting other uh, products in the door. And we've been able to turn things around, you know, reasonably fast for our dealers. And so that was, that attracted them and they were all asking, well, if you know, you carry a cup holder, we want to do that too. And then, and then we had a lot of um, a lot of our customers, a lot of our longtime customers coming back to us, wanting to know if we made one. And and I didn't want to just again, this is it's the same philosophy I think that we try to have with everything that we make. We want to put an original spin to it. We we knew that there there are other people that make some great products out there, and so we wanted to make one. Uh, that maybe had a little bit different take. So we kind of made ours with some different items. Uh, uh, our T-nut, our fused T-nut that we use actually works on feel-free products without requiring a feel-free adapter. Which so is we, huge. I had a feel-free. I know all about that struggle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and that was something that, and I, and I have a feel-free as well. I've had the Mokin 12.5, which I love, and I, I've had a lure and a, uh, Johnny Boat and a Big Fish, so and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Feel Free and, and that I'm affiliated with here in Nashville. They just became a, a Feel Free dealer. They were a big dealer, but now they brought in Feel Free full time now with the Departure Book One. So we now they now are carrying them in the Nashville area, and we've already gotten some in the door, and I'm you know really stoked. And I and I'm a big fan of the guys over at Feel Free with you know Denver and Jim and and Joel, those, and they've been so great to me, and I, I just think the world of them. So I wanted to create a product with our track mount accessories that really did cater to the Feel Free guys, but also to anyone that has any other type of gear track as well. So we found that 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 really, you know, that perfect T-nut that was going to allow us to do that. So that was one part of the formula. The second thing is I, I wanted to create one where you could swivel either towards you or away from mm -hmm. you um so we were able to accomplish that and then the third thing was we wanted to have it drain properly so we had you know we we've got a we've got a quarter inch hole in the metal that allows the drainage to happen really rapidly and get well and um and we we find a lot of our customers are using a cup holder not just as a cup holder but you know as a lure holder or yep. as a that you know not taking anything from it because it does hold a cup great or you know a bottle but that's why i wanted one because i like to have something in front of me when i peel off a plastic or a you know spinner bait i toss it in the cup holder and then it, everything just drains out and then at the end of the day i can just dump that cup holder in a bag and yep back to it oh absolutely and then the other part of it was we put a tether hole uh on the base um, and we we use our we use our own design bases and we include tether holes. So if you want to include like some products from say Rogue Fishing, who Mark's a great friend of mine, and we're we're actually going to be sharing stuff. Yeah, uh, we're going to be sharing some booths together uh, in the upcoming uh, consumer show season. So uh, I cannot so, wait for that. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna do it up big. We'll be talking about that a little bit later too. Uh, uh, but we're we've got some uh, we've got some very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> plans uh and we've got some products too that we're also getting in as well but the track mounted accessories the cup holder was that was kind of our first one and then we went right after the cell phone gri quick grip right after that which i'm really i'm really proud of that particular item because we were able to get the price point down to you know we sell it for 26.99 and yeah really proud of that because we're we're the most affordable one on the market and we are we're not completely again we have our own spin to it um we really did focus on a really good this same kind of philosophy on the track mounted uh the track mounting you know with the t-nut and everything with and also including like a rubber washer so when you tighten it down it really locks in on the rail 
um, and it holds the phone really well. Uh, we've got the adjust piece on the back that allows you to spin it. So you go portrait or you can go landscape, uh, you know, when you're out there on the water, uh, you know, taking videos. We've, we've, had, we've had one of our pros, John Rapp, uh, has been filming with it, just using it primarily to film with. Using his phone, yeah. which that really, video he posted was cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, he's up in West Virginia, so he's catching he's catching big hogs up there anyway. Yeah. But to be able to use that like you would a like you would a camera holder or, or a GoPro holder is pretty impressive to show the flexibility of that particular item. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm really happy with it so far. And we also again we also put a tether. Uh, tether hold so you can actually take your your rogue fishing and so mark was actually in the shop on thursday and we took we took a uh, cell phone holder and we, we put it on a cell phone and then, then attached that to our quick grip and it worked it, like worked that's they awesome worked. so it's so you never know how i missed that it's got a tether hole both of those <laughs> items like i yeah. almost just jumped up ran in there and grabbed it just to see if i think what i missed that yeah, and we're you know, and that's the thing. It's like we're we're again, we just always try to put a different spin, add some different things, put a different different function on it, uh, use it for different things uh, because we just you know, not only is that going to differentiate what we offer, but it's also going to allow us to you know get feedback and 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 make even more additions in the future. And you know, we're working on some things with row fishing as well, you know, in the future too. So it's. I'm always trying to keep my eye on, you know, hey, how can I integrate other products that some of these guys already might own and just to make it more value and give it more of a more of a value, you know, to them, at, you know. And so so that also led then to our third track mounted accessory that I've caught a lot of flack about. And uh, and I don't care because I love it. It's the, the quick view, the mirror. Oh, and, I have I have caught a lot of flack from some guys. You know, people ask me, "Well, do I need blinkers now? Do I, do I need to get an airbag? You know, installed in my kayak?" I'm I'm just gonna say this, and you know, and I'll let everyone draw their own conclusions. Whatever, that is an item you don't know you need until you have it. Yeah. Uh, going out on the water, I was out on the water yesterday, and I was with my niece who got to get in her own kayak. She's ten years old. And she was in her own kayak for the first time, and she loved it. But she was constantly behind me. And I've had back surgery. It's hard for me to turn around, and I'm not as flexible as some of the younger guys. Having that mirror, looking down, and just seeing her, knowing that she's there and she's okay, it's worth whatever it would cost to have it. And and if you're out on the lake with a lot of motor boaters, being able to see behind you, if you've got a rear motor mounted on the back of your kayak to be able to see your motor. So if you're getting hung up and you pull your motor up and you can see weeds, you know, you got weeds. I, I'm sorry. It's 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 a hell of a it's a hell yeah. of an item to have on the lake. And when I don't put on my kayak now, I feel naked. Yeah. And it's and like that, uh, like what Rick, it says, if, if it's it's selling. So it's not a stupid idea. If it's no, selling, no, it's definitely selling, and 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 one of those things too is is that we also know it's going to be a long con, right? We mm-hmm. we know the product for it, to, you know the the cell phone holder. We sold a bunch of those right away. That wasn't, you know the uh, the cup holder or the our new canoe quick tracks. You know those those items launched. We didn't even have to explain what they did. People yeah. just mom <laughs> and it's like, okay, I'm in. And it's not that way for every product that we make. And I think for me, I was, I was hoping that there would be like just straight white acceptance on that particular product because it was kind of near and dear to my heart because no one's made one. And, Mm -hmm. and beyond that, beyond that, you know, and I'm sure it's not an original concept. I'm sure other people have had a concept, but I mean, bringing a concept to the commercial market is a different animal. Yeah. And we were able you know, we were able to do that and, and, uh, you know, we're still selling, we're still going to keep, I mean, I'm not getting rid of it. I mean, I, I just think more people will adapt that to it as time well, goes on. Something that you said about it, that a lot of people that don't have an issue with think about it is we have a lot of, you know, veterans, you know, wounded vets and people that's had mm-hmm. so many back fusions and neck fusions that can't turn around and, you know, I'm limber and I'm in a swiveling seat. So I don't think about why I would ever need that. But I've fished with guys that yep. can't turn their head that far. And that makes perfect sense. So this just that being said may change a lot of people's minds on it. 
that yeah. people that don't need it that are like, well, that's a stupid idea. Yeah, I'll yeah. be like, oh, well, never mind. It's not for me, but it has a use. And that, you know, and you know, and it, what you just said, Jimmy, I think that's super important. I, I think being able to cater and have items that anyone from any walk of life can use, and yep. and and I also think too, for me personally, um, I I kind of try to make products that I wish I had while I was on the water. You know, because because of the back surgery I had 15 years ago. I definitely have some limited mobility and that's why I made that crate. You know, I made a crate that you could access just doing a straight reach back and not having to turn your body. And the mirror came from that same place. I think where it was like, okay, you want to have something that you can mount, you can adjust it however you want. And then once you have it, then, you know, when I'm going to fish with other people, I just like having it. I, I like being able to see behind me. So if I go on down the lake a little bit, like I was with my buddy a few weeks ago and I went down the lake and I could just look back in the mirror and see that he's behind me and where he's located. Mm-hmm. It, it, it brings a lot of ease and a lot of comfort to mind when, when you're able to do that. And it's one of those things where once you have it and you look at it, you go, damn, man, why didn't I always have this? And so no, being able to like just glance behind, glance at it and like, cause like I took my nine year old out with me. And like she, she's been kayaking since she was like seven. So I know she knows what she's doing, but you know, just being able to just peek back and make sure she's still upright, you know, cause she's, she's quick to, you know, oh, I'm ready to go swimming and just bail out. So <laughs> just, just being able to that little bit of peace of mind is great. A hundred percent. And then also too, you know, with it, um, the other, the other aspect is if you're fishing in a, if you're fishing in a cove and, and there's trees and stuff behind you, being able to look up and now see, or you can shift it with the wind. And a lot of times I'll fish and I'll be in my own world, and all of a sudden I look up and there's a tree right there. I've had that happen, man. Having a mirror. Oh yeah, know. that's claimed a few rod tips. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. <laughs> and so. So, you know, that's an item that, you know, I'm always going to be like an advocate for. <laughs> and, you know, and I'll, I'll take what comes with that. You know, it's like if, if people like it, they're going to like it. If, you know, you don't need an airbag, you know, or a blinker. But I do find it interesting, though, that if you motorize your kayak, and that is the only vehicle that I can think of on the water that doesn't require a mirror. Yeah. You know, I, I you know, I said that, you know, <laughs> I, even speedboats have them. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, even bass boats. I see them. I see rear view mirrors on bass boats. So I, I do find it interesting. That's the only craft that that doesn't have them, and so that's another reason why we kind of wanted to make it too. But you know, I, you know, that's going to be one that is going to, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to take time and, and patience, you know, to to get to get that out there. You know, it's like we drop an anchor system, and people say that, and they go, oh yeah. That totally makes sense. I want that right away or, or the quick tracks. But when we dropped that, you know, that was the first product for me. It was also, it took me aback too. Cause I wasn't typically when we release products, we just get a lot of positive feedback. So yeah. uh, it shocked me that yeah, people are like, is this even a thing, you know? And oh and, yeah, uh, I mean, so, I won't lie. when I saw it, I was like, bro. Yeah. yeah. And then like thinking yeah. about it, I was like, well, no, it's got tons of, you know, like I said, not maybe not for me, but plenty but, of other people. No, absolutely. Something again, I love people that are naysayers because I had one of my buddies go out with me and he was a naysayer. He was making fun of it. And then I said, hey, put it on your boat. See, he put it on his boat. When he came back, he goes, yeah, I'm going to buy one from you. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And I was like, I was like, that's all I've ever, you know, that's all I've tried to say, you know. So I tell people, hey you're going to rag something totally that's good if you want to bash it that's totally fine sure right to do so but try it you know yeah. try the item what i may even do i may even you know may even offer like a special promo or a special offer to try it and if you don't like it you get your money back you know it's like cool i'll put my money where it's at you know i'll i'll, I'll stand behind the product 100 percent. you get it and you, you think can, it's you're stupid then send it back to me it, it you know, can- no Mirrors could take off, and then you could start making like the F one car shaped mirrors, where you'd have both on the front, <laughs> pointed nose of the boat, two F one mirrors. Yeah. I'd be down. That, that's what Apex watercraft is missing. <laughs> Carbon fiber F one mirrors <laughs> no. straight from Ferrari. Uh, the, no, that craft is going to have a camera. That's going to have a backup camera on it. Oh yeah. yeah, I could see that autopilot. 
brand, dude. It's gonna have it's gonna have a backup camera. It hey, needs I'm, a backup. I won't. I, you know, Eric Jackson's a visionary, and the one that I got to mess with, it's cool. It's not. I'd buy it cool, but it's cool. Well, that's the thing. again. I, and here I am. I'm making a joke, but I'm sure once I try that product, I'm gonna want it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that you know. I, I think that's the I think that's the thing. It's like you know, here I am. I'm making a joke, but I, I'm pretty sure if I got in that thing and I paddled it, and that thing takes off because it's carbon fiber. Uh, I've been playing with carbon fiber lately. It is no joke. It is an awesome material, and it's it's one of those types of things where it's and it's it, pretty. Oh yeah, it's rigid. It's resilient. It's a good material. So it's like if, that, if you, you know, know carbon and the, fiber with a good poly coat on it and that shine to it. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Well, and and that product, you know, that's the thing. That material is going to get cheaper. Uh, that 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 kayak is is ten grand now because it's the only one of its kind. It may, you know, two years from now, you're going to see it dip down to maybe six or five, you know, because a, a they'll probably be making more of them, and b there'll be other companies getting into it as well. Yeah. Um, so you know that the yeah. technology. I think I mean, a lot of the price on that is so high too. I mean, the material, yes, but you're talking about, like, three or four people touching it at all. Like, it's it's as handmade as it gets, basically, you yeah. know? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like they don't have machines for it yet. Yeah, right. I mean, right. Have, they're going to have special molding machines just for that material. Like, that's going to... That, that, that's the thing that I've realized in this business is that, you know, if something hasn't been made yet, there's a reason why it's the price that it's at. Because like you said, it's specially handmade, it's handcrafted, hand designed, and 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 that's going to always cost more than being able to mass manufacture. But trust me, they are all fully aware of that and they're working. Oh, yeah, no, the- it's they just needed someone to dabble in that market. Now it's happened and yeah. now that market will start to make a move. Oh yeah, because you're gonna have you're gonna have competitive kayaks do more of that. Um, just the sea turn kayaks do more of that. Um, you're gonna have the Olympics uh, type, you know, competitors do more of that with the with the kayaks, and so that's all gonna lead to making machines that can make that those kind of crafts with that kind of material. And when you see those machines be made, be out there now, the cost it's gonna bring everything down. And and that's what it's done with. I mean, look at lithium technology. Look at the lithium batteries. You know the yeah. prices that we enjoy now versus when lithium first came out. And you, if you wanted something that was over sixty amp hours, you were expected to pay seven to nine hundred dollars. Now you know great companies like Dakota and Anti Outdoors, people like that. Now you can get those products for much cheaper. So, um, so that I, I the very same thing is going to happen with with carbon fiber and and. Uh, and uh, yeah, don't be surprised if we have a carbon fiber product coming out. I was uh, gonna say uh, that sneak peek comment there. I I, I got <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I saw it, I saw Brad's ears perk up. I was like, hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, it's coming. That's all I can say right now. But it's it's coming well, pretty soon. You give it a few weeks. Nice. Well, I got a few questions about the track mounted accessories. The uh, the cup holder. What what size does that? Uh, bottle does it hold like a Nalgene? Yeah, yeah, it holds it, it holds that. Well, it's got it's got two kind of it's got two kind of ridges. It's got like a smaller ridge that's in mm-hmm. the deeper recess, so it'll hold like you know it'll hold like bottles, you know, and things like that. And then um, and then it's a little bit wider uh, mm-hmm. for you know like your uh, your smaller Yeti cups, uh, mm-hmm. some you know uh, your your uh, athletic water bottle uh, things like that and we're working on building like uh, like molding like completely molding our own like a, a newer version of it that's going to be able to you know house the larger yeti mugs and things like that but, but yeah this one uh i'll get you the circumference on that i didn't bring that with me in fact i can probably pull that up while we're while we're talking but um but yeah, so it fits like a lot of standard stuff. It's also great for like cans, mm-hmm. you know. Not, you know, if you got cans that could sit in that lower recess, and they fit, you know, they fit extremely well there. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah that's what you, I was figuring. It was something like that. Cast is done. I'll get you some. I'll get you some measurements on that circumference of the inside of that. Sounds good. And the uh, the phone holder. So it's it's a little different than. Uh, some of your other competitors out there and uh 
you guys, you have like an extra arm instead of just four. Yeah. What ex- what exactly does that do, and why did you guys do it? Yeah. So it's got so it's got so it has six. So it has it has like the four standard sides that you can pinch. So you can kind of pinch it and then put your phone in, and it fits. It fits all the phones. Like you know, I I have an iPhone eight personally, like the Plus, mm-hmm. and it fit, fit great even in the OtterBox. Um, you know, the iPhone 10, the iPhone 11, it fits those. Yeah. My, uh, I have the, the pro max. I have the, like the biggest iPhone right now. And with my otter box on it, it still fits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome here. Well, so the, what we found was we kind of, we liked using those, those two extra grips for the phone. Some of the bigger phones to be able to sit, uh, sit and rest. Mm-hmm. And so, and it also, it just gives you another point of contact too. And so it also, we've also found like we can turn it sideways and upside down and just really not worry about it. And the other thing that we also did too, we did what we called the, our testing in the shop, which is the fumble, uh, the, the fumble play where we try to strip it out of like, we basically made like a fake iPhone, like out of some of our material and put it in there and literally just, we'd walk around the shop and try to slap it out of each other's hand. <laughs> uh, and whoever did, you know, whoever does it, you know, gets a gets a free lunch or whatever. But we tried to get this thing out and and hammer, you know, take it. I even had my phone in it and would just take it upside down and just shake it in front of people, and they're like expecting my phone to come out and it never does. So I'm really proud of that. Like the grip on it is super strong. Um, I'm not going to say it's impossible for it to come out. I'm not yeah. that. But, but I will say that it, it's 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 stood up to a lot of the fun tests that we've done at the shop, and it's been out on the water with me. Every time I go out, I have it. I, I just leave it on my boat now, and I just put my phone in it. And uh, uh, it's it's just it's another one of those things you don't know you need until you have it, and then mm-hmm. once you like you don't want to not use it. And uh, that's that's kind of been the way with me. So that so those two extra those two extra prongs I found that just give better grip. Also, we also use that too for some phones where the side buttons are a little bit has a different orientation than say like the iPhone. Then you can literally turn it upside down and then okay. turn thing and turn it upside down and it still holds your phone great. So it'll even work with like some of those Otter like um, you know not Otter box but the Sam some of the other brands that have like really the buttons are in different areas like Samsungs or or um, I'm trying to think of the other brand. HTC, some of those where the phone, where the buttons are a little bit like otter play. Yeah. They're placed in an odd area where the where the typical grip can touch it. Yeah. Where it's upside down, it, it, it they're away from it, and so it just gives you that flexibility to still use that phone too. Yeah, I I used mine. I took one to lacrosse with me, and uh, I put it on the the track adder, and I put the the extra arms on the bottom side to let the phone kind of rest in it, yep. and. Uh, I, I bet you I hit it three or four times and the phone never came out because yeah. I'm I'm rough on stuff. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys coming out with or do you have like the um, extension arms for that thing or anything to raise it? So yeah, so it's a really good question because we've been really talking about um, extension arms and raising it up and actually because you know we talked earlier too before the podcast started about um you know one of our one of our guys on our pro team john rap you know he's been using it as an actual like camera holder you know using this phone that way and so we we are now playing with some you know some adjustable some some adjustable add-ons that you could put on it and be able to like raise it up and then even turn it even more and even use it kind of the way you would like a Gro- gopro mount you know that no that'd like, be some, sweet yeah, yeah. I, I run GoPros, but I still, you know, phone cameras are getting hard to beat. Yep. For the, I mean, you, it's a multi-use item, so yeah. like when you put this camera on this 11 Pro in 4K, the footage is still better than what my GoPro is doing. Yeah. Because you can turn the the frame rate up and everything. Yeah, so like we, when I saw how good it ho- held it, I was already in my head trying to think of a way I could extend it up to get it a little more eye level. Yeah, so we're definitely working on that. We've got a couple of we got a couple of arm options. We're looking at some aluminum tubing. We're looking at some different materials to make that out of to try to still keep it like stable but lightweight. Yeah. Um, we could make it with our material, but then it just gets it like super heavy. So we're 
we're trying to like keep that weight down so that so that you know your phone's not gonna but also be like real stable so your phone's not gonna like you know move or bobble or whatever yeah. on the water so so we're kind of working on that right now we're also we're also working on a few different that that whole idea of lifting items off the boat where we we've we got a lot going on with that uh i'll put it awesome. that way we got some really cool stuff i think you got yeah, you the yak gadget drawing board is ridiculous yeah i mean i have add uh naturally like really bad and more like adhd probably but but it's really bad and and so i'm, I'm kind of like uh you know if i was a dog i'd just constantly be chasing the car you know and <laughs> wow. so I just, I'm always like, I'm like, oh yeah, what about this? What about this? What well, what about this? And so, yeah, it kind of looks like a kind of a schizophrenic serial killer, you know, my 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 board <laughs> where yeah, just constantly have you know here this weird uh, that dude, makes no sense to anybody else except you. I'm picturing I'm picturing a chalkboard right now with like a bunch of like random letters and pictures everywhere. A like beautiful mind kind of thing, you know, where it's like, yeah. you know, I can, I can, I can figure it out, but everybody else looks at it and goes, "Dude, you're just, you're just insane." And and I, I kind of, I guess you have to be to do this business, I think. Um, but, but but yeah, we've got so much, you know, there's so much I consider that's not being addressed, and so as. You know, like I told my wife this not too long ago. I was like, I'm going to keep doing this until I feel like I've addressed all of the holes that I feel like exist. Um, and not and, and not just kayak products, but, you know, other products, you know, boats, campers. Yeah. Well, well, why not? Hey, man, I got a, this new camper trailer. I'd be glad to let you pr- play around with. Hey, I'm <laughs> really down. I need, I need guinea pigs, man. I, you, know, you know, I can't have all the gear in the world, you know. It's like yeah. I want I so want to. I just, uh, I just, I have to cap it at some point. So having people that are willing to do that, absolutely. So Jimmy, you're definitely on oh. my. Oh you're man, on I my... wish I was towing it with me to Kentucky. I would, I'd drop it off. <laughs> but there you go. What? The, these custom trailers are becoming popular with kayak anglers, man. So oh. that could be an idea for you. So huge. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. trailer accessories. I'm in on that too. Yep. Well. Well, it it. It's been more than talked about. I'll put it that way, um, because I really do feel like that's also an area that's been ignored, and also, also your truck. You know, being able to bring certain items that exist in the kayak world and then bring it to your vehicle or bring it to your trailer. Um, so we've got a lot of things that that we've already, a couple of things we've even filed patents on that that we're already exploring uh, to bring. To bring to the market so yeah it's it we we are constantly on and i don't sleep i i don't i maybe sleep two three hours a night and uh um i'm always grinding i don't you know i wasn't fortunate enough to have children so this is my baby and so i'm working six seven days a week doing this this is uh you know i had a couple of dealers ask me last week it's like is this your full-time gig and i'm like i yeah definitely my <laughs> I'm gig. I, it's an understatement. I mean, this is kind of all I do, and uh, from this is, this is my two full time jobs. Yep, pretty much. I mean, uh, you know, I, I had a I had another business for for many years, and my wife now runs that business, and um, I'm still loosely, very very loosely involved. But but this is yeah, this has been all that you know, me and a couple other people that are very dedicated to this have been a part of, and. We're kind of we're just constantly trying to come up with new things, new concepts, new ideas, and or take things that may even exist and try to make them better. And uh, you know that's been kind of a that's kind of been our mission since we started this. But it's really cool now to see how it's evolved because now, like you said about the trailers, you have those products now evolving, and mm-hmm. it's and I'm looking at that going, I want to be a part of that too because first of all. You know they're awesome. Like uh, we had, we had a gentleman. Um, and I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and say his name. I don't care because he's an awesome dude. But uh, a guy by the main name of uh, Ben Meredith, who uh, who came by the shop and he 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 loaned us uh, some Hobies, and he has a yak. He has that really nice Yakima trailer, and he dropped it off 
and I was walking around that Yakima trail. I think I was probably more excited about having that trailer in the shot than I was the Hobies because <laughs> I was looking at like because you know Yakima makes beautiful products. I mean they're they're not oh, yeah. cheap. I mean, but you get what you pay for. I mean, they that trailer has shock absorbers on it. That that you can put the uh, you can put the Yakima tent uh, tent and actually camp off the top of that trailer. Like you, that thing is just amazing. And so when I looked at that, that sparked my brain into so many different avenues to make some products for to convert a regular trailer into that. You know. Heck. Um, you need to get uh, talk to Brian about it because I think that's the trailer he has. And he probably has some good ideas for it. Oh yeah, that is for a minute. And then one of the uh, one of our buddies in Tennessee's got one that, um, that, you know, like you said, beautiful product and it's it's str- they're expensive, but like like a buddy of mine was like, no, that trailer's not worth that money. And I was like, well, it's got independent suspension axles. Like oh, yeah. I used to mess around with, uh, I was going to turn my Jeep into an overland truck or build an overland trailer. Like those yeah. axles, are probably not Yakima's, but some of that style, they go up to a thousand dollars a piece. Mm. Like oh, yeah. just to give the trailer that better ride. And oh, you're yeah. not going to bend the, bend the axle no. and stuff like that. No. And it's going to, uh, it's going to absorb every hit in the road. Yep. Well, so and also it's hard better. to reach places. Right? You got those hard to reach places. Uh, and, and it can go where you're, you know, and if you're thinking about the guy that I'm thinking about that has that, he's got a Jeep and he, he goes to the, he goes to some of those spots of water that only he can get to. Mm, and yeah. so trailer allows him to do that. And so, you know, you look at that and you go, okay, well, what's that worth? And then when you look at the fact that now you can take that trailer and turn it into a camper on top and still have your kayaks on the bottom and yeah. sleep on I mean, now now you start looking at a product that goes well above and beyond what you would call just a regular trailer. So, you know, so some people would say that's super expensive, but then it, it also depends how long. Yep. Yeah, what? How are you going to use it, and how often are you going to use it? Then you look at it and go, okay, if I was camping all the time and I'm out all the time, and I have a trailer that allows me to do both things uh, with comfort and ease, then. You, now you're combining two loves, putting them in the one thing, and now that cost is really not that bad. Um, you know, I, I, I used to say that all the time to clients in the graphic design world that I come from. It's like, you know, something may seem expensive until you see what you could really do with it. And then once you realize you can do five, six things with it, now you take, okay, what was my cost for each individual function? And then put those all together, and then you find well, if you spend your money this way, you're actually saving money right. because now you're getting five things that you couldn't do before. You had zero function before, now you got five, uh, and now you got it for the price of maybe what two or three of them would cost. Well, then you look at that with the trailers; it's the same thing. You know, it's like I I have a tra- I have a kayak trailer, uh, very bare bones one, and mm-hmm. now I'm looking at like how can I update it? How can I make it different? How can I put some of these cool features like a yak trailer so I'm, I'm looking into some of that too to take an ordinary trailer and turn it into some of those things as well i, I think there's some great options there yeah same here so something i wanted to get on and i'm sure brad's got it wrote down though you know you're talking about making stuff that's not out for certain boats you know you know i'm a new canoe guy and brad you've got one now uh let's talk about some of the stuff that you've came out with for those boats yeah uh i have been learning a lot about new canoe uh it is a movement uh it has got some very passionate people uh it it blew me away because we end up we i had a young man who was actually one of music city outdoors uh clients he was the son of one of the clients and he just bought a, a, a kayak from them and he said, you know, my son just got a new canoe frontier like off of Craigslist and um, he's young, college age. And I said, hey, can he bring his boat into the shop? Because if he brings his boat in the shop and lets, it, and he let it, you know, lets us have it for a week and a half or whatever, whatever products I make, I'll give them to him. And and the guy's eyes just lit up and he called his son immediately and he said, oh, yeah, our son will be over this afternoon with that boat. <laughs> and uh, and he came over, and the young man was, couldn't be—he couldn't have been any nicer. And and he had a Frontier uh, 12, and so I took that boat, and I immediately started looking at opportunities that I saw. And one of those was how could how could we make 
a non-drill option for you to have, you know, rail accessories, still be able to use, you know, rod holders, fish finder, uh, you know, fish finder transducer mounts, things like that. Like, how could you still have those things and not have to drill holes into your into your boat? And so that's where we came up with the quick tracks. And um, I had no idea that 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 product. You know, we we put out the the we put out the the first one we put out was a regular size one, which is about eight inches of gear track space. We put that out for eighteen ninety nine. And we, you know, and that includes, you know, the, the T nuts, the mounted and the, you know, the knobs and everything. And we put that out for 1899 and within 24 hours, we sold over 50 of them. And I, my business partner called me and he was like, dude, and I was like, I know. And, uh, we had, yeah, we tapped into this golden vein and, and, and what, but what we did when we first made them was we kind of, we kind of, you know, we know, we know what we know and we don't know what we don't know. Right. Where it was kind of like the, the different boats have different sizes. And I know that's a no brainer, but you know, I, I was kind of going off of the, the frontier thinking that that was the one, well, if I made it for this, it should fit the others. And I was very wrong mm -hmm. and, uh, corrected that within like three or four days of launching that product. Cause I was like, Oh snap, it doesn't fit the Flint. Oh no, it doesn't fit you know, the pursuit. And so I got, uh, I got in touch with Mike Smith, Jimmy, you know, him, um, I, just nah, a, I don't know that dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's my, he's my regional director. I better know him. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, man, he's an ambassador and just incredible guy. And I called him and I said, man, I need your help. And he's like, what do you need? And I said, hey, you know, can you get me like one of each model? And he's like, Oh yeah, I already got them on my trailer. I can be over, you know, in a couple hours. And he came over, stopped what he was doing that day, came, came to the shop just so that I could measure each one of these and make these and fit them and, and get them, you know, get them perfect. And, you know, it, it, it's a big lesson to me about, you know, there, there, there are people in the industry that we look up to and that we see, but, to be honest, it, it's real humbling for me when I meet people that that like what we do and so much that they would stop what they're doing and and come to the shop and it just it just drives home the fact that we don't do anything alone and and we I was very humbled by you know so many people that have called me and you know hey what can we do to help you do this or do you need help with this or do you need help with this and there's so so many generous people I know Jimmy you've been one of those guys too where you know, you've been able to Appreciate field it. test our product, you know, like with our anchor system and, you know, our, our anchor system that we just came out with for a new canoe, the quick stop. And, you know, you mm -hmm. took it and you, you know, and, you know, we've had some experiences there. We're learning to make, you know, that yeah. mousetrap better because of a lot of, you know, a lot of what you, you know, experienced out on the water. So we've had so many wonderful people like help us and make these products as good as they are. And so, Mike was no exception with that. So we, you know, we got those quick tracks kind of figured out. And with the pursuit, we looked at the pursuit and we said, you know, with those legs on the quick tracks, we need to like bring them out more so that you had, that you could still use the rod holders on the side and still be able to put your rods in there and still use your quick tracks. And then we had some people going, well, you know, they're not, they're not long enough. You know, I've got this, uh, I've got a, you know, Yak Attack cell block that I want to put on and it barely fits it or doesn't fit it at all. I was like, okay. So that day I came out with the, the XL version, which is a 12 inch track. And then I have some people are now saying, oh, well, the 12 inch track is great, but I want to put it all the way up front and it's too narrow. It's too long because it's narrow. So now we're coming out with an adjustable uh, version of the quick tracks that oh, you can cool. now, where now, now we have, we give you a track, the track has holes in it, and then you get to pick where you screw those holes in. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can, real narrow or you can make it super wide and uh and so we're 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 we've already we've already begun that with the flint model so the flint model quick tracks you get that uh there and now we're going to adapt that principle to all the other quick tracks that we make uh as well so it's it's an ongoing evolution uh but i've realized how passionate new canoe uh owners are and so that kind of led you know it was great too because it was also, and I'll say this real quick: 
it was also a stepping stone for some of the new canoe people to get familiar with yak catching because a lot of those new canoe owners since we didn't have anything for those boats they didn't really know about us mm -hmm. and i will post on the uh on the owners group on on facebook and they graciously let me be a part of their community and you know they found out about us and they're like well, what else do they make and then they go to our site and they see our low pro tray that we originally made for hobie users and they go well will this fit on our boat and we were like that made us take a serious look at our low pro tray it's like why can't we make more than one size you know we make more than one size of the low pro crate why don't we make more than one size so we're working on a smaller version of the tray that will work you know, on the Flint, we'll work on the Pursuit, we'll work mm. on the Frontier F10 um, to work on these boats. And and uh, whether you have a Fusion seat or not, you know, like our regular tray right now does work with kayaks that have the Fusion tray, but, you know, it can be a little bit of a tight squeeze because of how the Fusion seat, I say Fusion tray, sorry, the Fusion seat, the way the Fusion seat kind of slopes, you know, a little bit yeah. there. Yeah. So we're working on, we're modifying that, we're making those a little shorter and uh, and a little bit more, oh, and, and that'll allow you know that'll allow the uh, that tray to work pretty flawlessly, and and uh, you know on the you know on the new canoes and everything. And then we're working on um, some other quick track uh, products as well. We have our we have our XD model coming out that will you know feature you know some different tool holders and things like that. Um, that's coming out real soon. That might even be out as early as the end of this week um and so you know we're just Hurting finding off yeah yeah i mean we're just coming up with new well yeah well, you guys always get the exclusive but uh <laughs> but, but yeah but i mean that's the thing it's like we're constantly evolving these products and we're always seeing like new needs arise um there could be you know there there could be a foot, uh you know a foot console or a foot you know console in front storage console in front of you that could be on the rise very soon as well. Um, so, and then, and then moving on to our anchor system that we made, you know, we had to design that differently just because of the way the new canoe is. Again, you have the tracks on the inside that makes it incredibly functional modular, but you don't have any other mounting surfaces uh, to, to put it on. So it made it so, somewhat of a challenge. So we kind of made a, you know, a tray kind of, if you will, that like goes into the tracks and then the, and it's adjustable. So we made it adjustable so it fits all the boats. Um, but at the same time, we also have some different heights that we have it at as well. You know, the Pursuit has a little bit of a shorter of an anchor, you know, anchor point than what the Frontier has. So we made it adjustable where you can use that, you know, you know, on the frontier or, or on the Flynn, if you want. So we, you know, that particular anchor system was a challenge. But now that we put it out, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be doing more film and, and footage on it as well, so customers can can see how it works. It's definitely different than any of the other designs made for the quick stop. And but but so far we we've, we've had a lot of people give us some positive positive feedback. But we're also making some some new changes to it as well to improve it and also especially you know as jimmy can attest to while you're going down the road uh we're, <laughs> yeah we've we've changed some different things to it to make it be uh you know once you adjust it and set it you can lock it in and then you'll then you you know we're using some nylock bolts instead of loose knobs and some things like that that's just mm -hmm. going to make it a lot more a lot more durable especially when you're doing road travel because not having to take that off the boat every time is also that's a, that's also an attractive feature as well. So, um, so yeah, so we've got and we've got more coming from for new canoe too. I mean, I just I, I the more I familiarize myself with it, what's really cool <clears throat> shop the shop that I'm also affiliated with that I share a space with. I, uh, they they let me back in the early days squat in their warehouse. Now I'm taking up most of their warehouse space back on the top side, <laughs> but. Uh, but but they are now a new canoe dealer as well, and so now I will have more access to those boats, which I'm super excited about too. So so the new canoe world is only growing with us, and and the same for Hobie. I mean, the Hobie, Hobie was another another user group that I was I won't say ignorant of, but I was definitely not as aware uh, of the passionate following that they have as as, yeah. as new canoe. 
the new canoe guys and the Hobie guys are equally passionate, you know, about their product. And they believe, you know, that's what I love about the kayak world in general. If there's a brand that you love, the loyalty that exists there is really second to none. And, and with Hobie, you know, you know, being at the consumer shows earlier this year before COVID hit um, and talking to those guys and hearing what, you know, they had to say, it's like, hey, do you make this for this? Do you make, do you make this product? Do you make this? And do you have a Hobie line? I'm like, no, uh, I do now. And uh, that forced me to, you know, pay attention to that world. And so with that, I guess I can go ahead and say that here is we've taken that quick tracks concept and now we've attached it to Hobie. We have our own h rail adapters nice. and now you're going to be able to get 12 inches of, of track mounting space for the price of which you would pay for another product or, or like a Hobie specific product. So now you're going to be able to get a higher value. We also have our XD version for that as well, where you'll have little holes for your fishing lures and to be able to put your fish grips and your pliers on it as well as mounting up one of our phone holders or one of our cup holders. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're taking over. Right? <laughs> you, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said the uh, new canoe guys are passionate about their product, dude. I think that's what drew me to them. Just, just yeah. listening to Jimmy and Dan talk about it, I'm just like, I want to be a part of that. Yeah, I feel like, I feel bad because I've, I've talked. I mean, I talk it up because I really do like the product. But I was a fan of the product before I was ever a part of the team. Yeah. But like, you know, when Dan leaned on me about details on it, you know, I sold him on it, and then I, I almost got uh, Milford sold on one, and then you swapped me and you talked, and then, you know, yeah, we still talk, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just a killer product, man. Oh, yeah, well, I, I enjoy it. And it's like the whole blank slate of a new canoe. I think that's why it fits Yak, Yak Gadget, Gadget so, so well. well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and you know, and that's the thing, too. And, and I agree with you guys about new canoe because I, I, I admire that boat, too. There are certain things that are products and then there are certain products that are a movement, right? And, and, and I think like new canoe really falls into that where it's not just the product itself. It's also, and, and I don't want to be cheesy here or corny, but it, there's a way of life to it. I mean, it's a different aspect. I mean, once you get in that boat, it's a different type of boat than, than, than other kayaks that I've been in, in the sense that the, the, the stability is there. It, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a boat, but it's kind of like a kayak. It's kind of like a canoe. It's like, mm -hmm. it, it's just so different than other things that I've been in. But at the same time, if you're in a pursuit or if you're in a frontier, it's a, such a stable platform. And the fact that you can make it a tandem, you know, yeah. you can turn it into them and bring your kid with you or bring a buddy or, or you, you can throw can take a gas that. motor on it, you know, dude. Like, yeah, they, some of our guys, they've put two guys on there and the gas motor, you know, you can yeah. load that thing down. Have, so, are you friends with uh, Bradley John on Facebook? You um, recognize the name? Not, any of you guys? I don't. I, he he posted yet. he posted a video of uh, a motor. I, I don't know what the motor is. I've never really even seen one in person. But it's like a long shaft motor. He's sitting here like just plowing through like a thing of lily pads. Oh, it's like, probably a like a mud motor. Long, it, looked, it looked cool yeah like, long shaft man. so it can run super shallow yeah 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 uh, that was cool he posted it um, like on a kayak yeah he put it on the pursuit no kid i need to find this video yeah yeah pretty cool. So cool shout out to john bradley john he was actually a guest on the og show recently so yeah. that's sweet well and that's a great point that you just made the flexibility so when you have a kayak or, or a movement like that, that's a flexible platform. Well, it, it's like Candyland for a guy like me. You know, uh, when when we get a boat like that, we go, okay. I mean, now now it's it's up to our imagination because now we can take this and what we create now is that going to be meaningful? It was kind of like those quick tracks. We had no idea that that was going to be a meaningful product for for new canoe owners, and we're we've been happily surprised and, and oh man uh, dude i'm telling you when y'all posted the picture i think it you posted it on the the yeah gadget team page like I, my whole body lit up and i was like thank god i can get my screen close to me and it's gonna be 
right where it needs to be. And you know, stood and up it, with you. Stood up as high as you are, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's... Jimmy? Do Sorry, it. do you have that product right now? Oh, yeah. I'll send you pictures of it. I grabbed it from him and took... I grabbed all of his new products except the mirror and took it to lacrosse. Nice. And uh, I put the... So I have my 9-inch Raymarine Element on oh, there. Oh, wow. And then it had, you know, and it takes... So everybody knows it's not something I'd hide from anybody. The Frontier, because the tracks are so long, they yeah. they flex a little bit because mm-hmm. it's one solid piece of track from the front of the back of the boat. Um. Yeah. So my screen would rock. Well, the way that quick track's designed, it lays down onto the gunnel. So it basically yeah. stabilizes itself. So a big, ask. heavy screen like I've got, it's not moving. Yeah. I was able to dial the angle in even more. And then I was able to take his uh, quick phone holder and put it in front of it. And with all the heights I've got, the phone is easily accessible. I've still got my motor control here for my EPS system and then the screen and nothing's blocked. It's all at the perfect height. Nothing's moving. And then like I was saying before the show with the EPS system, you've got a, uh, I think it's like a three by six electrical junction box. That's got the relay board and everything for the speed controller in it that uh, yeah. goes from there to your battery cable. That box, yeah. the your first size of that quick track, that box fits perfect in there so like when i have that track adapter where i have it for my screen and everything like you lay the eps system out and that box fell right in between the legs of the track adder Mm. like it was supposed to be there so now it's not a big box that you're staring at it's tucked away really nice and clean and that it was like i liked the anchor the anchor worked great like super super smooth easy to run but i think that that little track adder is probably my favorite thing. Like, I love the crate, yeah. too. Like, I'm yeah. going to grab one of the other crates when I get up there Friday, but I love that track ad- adapter. Yeah, that was, that was again, you know, that was something that really, like, educated me very quickly. Like, once we put that out there, and then we had so many people, like, messaging us and saying, thank you for making this, like, which was, like, I did not expect that at all because I just, I was just, you know, you put out a product and you feel good about it, but you don't know, you know, it's like a lot of times I thought I'm in a bubble because I don't know, you know, I think it's a good idea, but that, you know, what I think really doesn't matter. It's really up to, you know, the, the customers that, you know, and, and so the fact that they have really like, and, and like what Jimmy just said too, I think it was also awesome is about the different uses of it. You know, it's like, he's, He's using it in a very different application than than some of our users that that bought them and just just be able to put rod holders on them, you know, and have them be at like you know a level with them, you know, where they're sitting up, and especially in that that those new you know fusion seats, you know how how great and high you set up in that boat, and to be able to have a rod holder that you ain't got to reach down to get, you know. So and then we've had people put cell blocks on, and then we've had people you know, put downrigger, you know, one guy put a downrigger on it. Uh, and I, that actually, you know, really shocked me too. But I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I built a, I built it with heavy material, um, you know, knowing that, you know, people were going to want to put some weight on it, you know, yeah. and I've had people go, like, will it support this or will it support this? And I'm like, well, I, I, I built it to where I can practically, you know, run a truck over the leg. So, I, you know, I, I want, I added more meat to it, you know, especially on the frontier piece. I added more meat to it because I, you know, what's really funny is I went and took it and put it on another boat. That's not a new canoe at all that has just regular tracks. And I grabbed it and lifted up the whole kayak like a handle. And I went, yeah, I think this might work. I think this might be <laughs> stable enough. And, that, and it's, you know, still not, that, it's, you know, it's thick and meaty, but it's not heavy. It's, it's yeah. not, not like. It doesn't look or feel bulky when you put it together and put it on the boat. Not at all. Well, yeah. there was a few questions I had about it. So, on the pursuit, it, you mount it in the freedom tracks on the floor, right? And it comes up the side and it sets on top of the gunnel. Does that interfere with the horizontal rod storage at all? Yeah, uh, were you talking about the pursuit specifically? Yes. Yeah, so we, yeah, so the pursuit is an interesting uh, design problem. Um, so, so the answer to your question is it doesn't interfere now because we 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 edited the design to where we 
we spread the we kind of spread the area out to where it it bridged more so we had it come up off the tracks earlier if you will to, to come over to give you that access to be able to put your rods you know under underneath it so you I can put it. your rod and still access your your you know your tip holders um you know looking at that pursuit and actually having one you know in the shop when you know mike smith brought them up i saw that and i was like well we got to design these legs a little these little arm leg things a little differently than we did you know for the flint or the mm -hmm. or the and so yeah so to answer your question yeah you, you have plenty of room to, to to put your rods um you know under it uh if you will uh, and and still have be able to access you know your tip rods pretty much no matter where it's at positioned on the tr on the track um, you have to send me a picture of that because i'm curious yeah. to see what it looks like yeah yeah most definitely uh in fact i think i have i think i have one now i can send you all right cool I, yeah i haven't seen the i haven't seen any for the other boats yet which i yeah. mean i don't think i need one for the flint which God knows if I pick one up, I'll find somewhere to put it. But I try to yeah, keep that will. boat stripped down. <laughs> like the frontier is the boat that's being trailered yep. and on a cart wherever it goes. So I'm okay with yep. putting gear on that. But I'm trying to keep the flint light. I do the same thing, man. You need those smaller boats for rivers unless yeah. you're trailering to a boat ramp or something. But yeah. uh, the, the other question I had was, uh, since you have it, Jimmy, you, you're moving that as close as you can to your seat. So I'm guessing the bolts and stuff that mount in the gear tracks don't interfere with the foot space. Or anything. No, because on the on the frontier, you know, you have deck on the very bottom, and then it goes up, you know, mm -hmm. we'll say three to four inches, and then it flattens out again. Mm -hmm. That's where the tracks are on the frontier oh, okay. the track and the floor. So I can get it anywhere I want it, and it's not going to affect my foot room on that boat. It's not like the frontier or the uh, or I mean the pursuit or the flint. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, yeah I'm just I, curious. My, just yeah. curious to see what it'd be like on the pursuit. I've, you know, I had the pursuit foot pegs that New Canoe makes, mm -hmm. and you know those mount directly in the floor track. Mm -hmm. The pursuit's such a big boat, and it's so easy to walk around on that I'm not worried about having. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have like four or five of those tracks or nothing like that because then yeah. you're gonna you know, have to move your feet around. But like, if I had one on each side. I would, you know, I typically, when I'm running the pursuit, my seat's kind of far back. Yep. For, for paddling. You, you, you know, you'll want to change that a little bit when you motor just so that it'll keep that, which I think with your setup, you're running the battery and the motor up front. Up front. Yeah. So you need to be back to keep the weight kind of evened out. Yep. But with that being said, you can have those tracks right against you to like hold your screen or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, you can just take a step out of the seat. I mean, I've, I used to fish on the hatch of my pursuit when I had it. Like it's super super stable platformer you can move around on so I, that's why i don't worry about like that affecting the floor space yeah like, maybe, this is the one of the main reasons why i bought the pursuit was because he opened deck so i was just i, I just i don't know it's just my thinking a little bit I don't and know. you don't have did, did you did you buy the console with yours no so you have nothing in front of you from seat to the bow hatch right that's yeah. where i put my net i like yeah. it's perfect i love it I, I'm a short guy, man. When I used to have, because I used to keep my pursuit seat as far back as it would go, like you could get down on, I could get down on my knees and crawl to the front. There's that much decks because I had the drawer. Yep. And that used to drive me nuts. I loved the drawer, but like it was such a task to get to it. Not because it was like, oh man, I got to walk across the boat because I might fall out. It was, oh man, I got to, it's so far away. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I mean, it's 13 I, feet of boat. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cool though. I like it. I'm starting to miss one. Me and me and Dan have been talking. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna let him borrow the F12, and I may borrow his pursuit. I love. I love the Frontier, but I had the pursuit for so long that I I kind of got used to it, and I really had that whole system dialed in when I had it. Yeah, it's nice. So, um, well, now you you also have the bow mounted motors now, and yeah. and being able to. Put those have the flexibility to put easily put those on the new canoe has also also been something that's been uh, really impressive to me as well. Oh yeah, oh that's yeah. What you drew you me can to tell it. how much of a trend that started because all the other companies are trying to, not like talking about like any brand in specific with what they're coming out with like with their boat, but you're seeing people trying to bow mount yeah. like motors yeah. to those boats, and they're not so doing I, it 
it, they're not doing it as good as New Canoe yeah. is. It, that's just my opinion. Right? No, I well, agree. And I'll, and I'll say that I'll say this too. I remember being at ICAST back in 2018, and they had um, they had a new canoe with a bow mount uh, motor on it. And that was back in 2018, and they were the only ones on demo day that had that. No one else had that. So I'm not going to say they were exactly the first because I don't know the history enough. But mm-hmm. I will say this. They were doing it for any. I saw any other. I'll be bold enough to say it. That was maybe not yeah. our idea, but they were the first company that made it work and make it work cleanly. Yeah, because I they were the only ones that had it out in the water for demo day, and that yeah. was 2016 when I was out there, and uh, I got to you know I got to test drive the pivot drive on the plant. Blake was super nice and uh, got me set up on the water and everything, and and they just got in fact they just got that pivot drive like developed enough to be able to bring it to ICAST. And while I was out there, I passed by, you know, uh, a man, a gentleman that was on, uh, that was on, I, I want to say, I, I want to say it was a frontier that had a, uh, that had a bow mount motor on it. And mm. I'm telling you, they, they were doing it before anyone that I saw doing it. So, you know, something I'll add about your stuff too, for anybody that does have uh, a new canoe product or new canoe boat, that's wondering about it. I have the pivot drive and the EPS system, and the yeah. anchor system, none of the tracks, like it doesn't affect any of that. It doesn't even get anywhere in the way of it. So, because I know that was a question I had when me and you were first talking about when you were designing it. You know, I was sending you pictures of my boats with measurements and drawings. And, you know, I sent you a picture yeah. of the pivot drive and was like, this is how it sits. This is what it's got to go around. And it, it all fits yeah. perfect. So, that's impressive. And, and- it, well, and that was the thing, you know, that we wanted to be able to use, you know, those rear tracks and not be, not interfere with the functionality the boat already possesses, you know, that being the, the you know, with the uh, stern tr- transom area. And so if you have the pivot drop or if you have your motor on the rear, not to, to be able to have your cake and eat it too. You've got your propulsion and you also got your anchor system as well. And the other thing that we've also been able to integrate too with that anchor system is also that deep water plate that that we used on our other items where it, it, our other quick stops where you can use it for you know deep water to run a traditional anchor or a drag train a drag chain or you know just use the pole if you want and um, and now <clears throat> what's even cool about the adjustable aspect of it so. We released a product earlier this year called the Y Flex, and the Y Flex was kind of the first in the generation of an adjustable system to where you could adjust it to whatever width uh, your, you know, your. Uh, and uh, Brad, I think you had this item or had yeah. it, where you, uh, where you could adjust it to whatever you know with, you know whatever have, whatever width bonus, you know with the gear tracks that you have. So we took that same mentality and put it in the new canoe anchor system, but we also did something else too with the Y flex, we made it modular plates. And what I mean by that is there's multiple plates. And so if you want to have your anchor on the left side, you can, if you want to have one on the right side, you can, if we're, we've got an anchor wizard plate coming out, so you can mount your anchor wizard on one side and you can have a pole on the other side. If you want to just have, uh, if you just want to have a power pole, uh, power pole mounts, and just buy our system that without the anchor part of it, but just buy the mounting system that allows you to have power pole mounts or have a power pole on one side or anchor wizard on the other side. We've designed this modular system where you can do that. We've got some pieces coming out for the Y flex and we'll have more pieces coming out for the new canoe uh, and uh, system as well. That will allow you to be able to put some of these other items that you may already have Um uh, on, on our to interlock with our system and then cleanly have it mounted, especially to the new canoe where you need that, where you need those mounting areas to, to you know protrude from the inside track and to come out. So so we've been real. I mean, we've tried to be very sensitive about that and not interfere with with other aspects of the boat that it already offers because the platform is already so incredibly flexible we wanted to make sure and you know i'm not intending this to be a new commercial either uh you know but but i you know when we make something when we make products for a particular line like when we get into some of our specific models 
we invest a lot of time in that particular model. We want to make sure that those users are being considered. You know, like I, I feel like what makes good design is consideration. You know, if you're considerate of the customers that's going to use your product, or at least as considered as you can possibly be at the time, I think you're going to have a good product. I think you're going to have something that's going to be meaningful to them. And that's what we try to do. And so we took that same mindset to Hobie, you know, our Hobie products, you know, listen, first of all, you, you start by listening, you know, the customers are so awesome. They're going to tell you what they want nine times out of 10. And if you take your ego out of the process, if you take your mindset out of the process and you listen to really what they want and why they want it, like I listen to Jimmy, for example, or, or I listen to Brad, or I listen to, I listen to people that I talk to uh, who use that product all the time. I would be silly not to listen to them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what we did at the consumer shows last year was, or earlier this year, I should say, where they came up to us and told us, and this doesn't exist, we want it. And I could either say, sure, thanks, or I can go, okay, let me get a new notepad, write this down and <laughs> work on getting in my shop, which I did. I mean, after the East Tennessee show, you know, I, I connected with uh, Michael Dotter. He was super nice and brought his Hobie uh, to my, you know, met me in Cookville. Let me take his boat. Didn't know me for more than a week. And let me use his, let me take his boat for a couple of weeks, which, you know, Hobies aren't cheap. A PA-12 yeah. is worth a, a nearly four grand. And let me have that boat with his, you know, put that thing on my trailer and cart it back to Nashville. I mean, you know, you got people, or Ben Meredith, who's leaving his boats at my shop, you know. It's like when people do that it shows you they're wanting this product yeah you know, they're thirsting for it enough where they'll hey i'll trust you with my gear i don't know you from adam but i want this so bad so we love that and 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 so that also gives us opportunity to become you know uh intimately equated with the boat you know and just to really go in and go oh this is why they designed it this way okay so when we make this we got to make sure that we pay attention to this. This is an important feature. You know, that gives us the opportunity to really go granular with it and make sure that when we make something, we're just not making something that we think would be cool. We're also making something that we think will work cool with the features that the boat already possesses. So that it's just another point of consideration for the users. Yeah, that's what I like about Yak Gadget. That's for sure, man. I think you guys are doing some awesome things there and, uh, I know, yeah. Enough can be said about like, like how he's talking about like John's like worth it, worth at work ethic. I can't get the word out, you know, watching him because I was at that East Ten. I think it was the East Tennessee show. I, I think that was the one I was at. I was at one of the Tennessee yeah. shows that. Uh, Our Lebanon. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was, dude, he's a madman, dude. He's running around talking to everybody. Yep. Assembling products in the back, slapping them on boats. You know, then the boat would sell, and if it didn't sell with the boat, he's taking it back off, going and putting it on another boat. Dude, he was all over the place for, I think that was three or four days, dude. Hey, he did it in Cincinnati, too. We we let him borrow a boat from Loveland Canoe and Kayak. He rigged it all up and everything. and Sold the go. boat. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, it was a Black Widow. Yeah. yeah that was we, yeah. You know, It was the same thing at the our show. We had a New Canoe Frontier 12 out front with a gas motor on it. You know, he had a couple, like, I think he had his crate in it. It had some yak attack yeah. stuff on it. And we had a guy that walked up and was like, I want that boat. And we started taking stuff yeah. off of it. And he was like, no, I want it just like that. Like, <laughs> nice. just like that. <laughs> so It's cool. I also have to be at the Columbus, Ohio show. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Dustin Hoy, I can't say enough good things about Dustin. He's such a great guy. And he, he uh, at Raccoon Creek. And, I, you know, I called him like three days before the show. And he was like, "Yeah, no problem, man. We'll we'll set you up with a boat." So he had a he had a SS 107 in my booth at the Columbus show, waiting on me when I got there, and and I loaded it up with the gear. And yeah, sure enough, by by the last day of that show, guy came up and said, "Hey, I really like that boat." I was like, "Yeah, it's pretty cool." He goes, "I'll take it." I was like, <laughs> "You'll take it." He's like, "I said just the boat. I you know that's on loan from me from Raccoon Creek." He goes, "No, no, I want the whole thing." He wanted, so he bought like, I don't know, it was like $750 of Yak Gadget gear plus the boat. And, awesome. you know, and, makes you feel good. <laughs> it really does. But when you see that, you also understand like the the power of presentation. And when, yeah. and that's why 
I work those shows. I've always got the boats in my booth with me. Some, some, I have some kayak, um, and we could talk about some of these shows, but I, I'm, I am now going to, uh, be going to a higher level now. You know, I think I had a 20 foot booth at, at the Cincinnati show. I'll be at the Cincinnati show now, either doing a 30 or possibly 40 foot booth. Hey. Um, uh, East Tennessee show. We're gonna. I'm, I'll be a uh, team. My schedule yeah. should be working out, dude. I'll so bring my boat because by then my boat will probably be covered in yak gadget stuff. Hey, I, I was about to say you got a pro team now, man. You could get us in the bu- booth with you and I'll, do all I'll gladly leave my boat there for a couple days. <laughs> yeah, our our booth game is gonna be like really strong. I mean, we're uh, we're also gonna be uh, we're also gonna be just having a lot more well first of all we're gonna have a lot more accessories than we did last year but mm-hmm. we're even we're teaming up and partnering with other accessory makers as well so we're gonna we're just gonna be offering a lot more to to consumers um and we're gonna have some you know some newer items too that that uh and we're gonna also have more apparel so we've been working on apparel nice. that's been a focus too we've got we've got four new uh four new t-shirts coming out and we're also gonna have hoodies of those we're also gonna have uh a hat so we'll, so we'll have a new we'll, we'll have a new official hat with Man, i really like that the... gadget hoodie would come in clutch right here as the temperature's starting to go down i was just thinking today yeah. it's like man i need a new hoodie <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, we're, we're we're definitely on that and then we also have our net gaiters so we have four designs for net gaiters we've got those being made right now um they're gonna I mean, we're going to have those at the show. They're going to even have their, they're going to come with their own packaging as well. So we've got those. Um, so we're going to have more apparel. I mean, I, I, that was another like area to focus on this year was, you know, to get more apparel. Uh, we, we have a lot of people that like our logo. They like our branding and yep. they tell us, they were like, do we want to wear this? You know, where can we buy this? And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, like I have like one shirt <laughs> and have it on the website. I've, I've, I've felt so lame for so long. And in fact, I just talked to, I just talked to one of our uh, vendors, uh, vending partners today about, you know, about quantities and stuff, but yeah, we're definitely, we're definitely rocking some, we're going to have at least one or two styles for the hoodies, but we got four t-shirts we're going to have, uh, we're using Richardson hats, which I really like the, the Richardson hats are really quality hats. We're going to have that. We're going to have our flag. So people love our flag icon. I, I had made that flag, um, you know, because uh, I'm, you know, USA driven. I'm very pro USA. I love us. Uh, but but I made that design you know, with our logo and it looked really cool. But I had no idea that how much people like that. And so now we're integrating the flag into a lot of our apparel. And that's gotten a lot of really good reviews so far with the people that have seen it. And then, and so we'll have a hat with that, with that emblem on it. But we'll also have our standard, you know, Yak attack hat as well. I mean, not yak attack. Sorry, <laughs> yak gadget hat. I just slipped. Uh, <laughs> just moving right on in. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yak, you know, our yak gadget, you know, our yak gadget gear. You know, we'll have that standard gear hat as well. So we'll have two, kind of two flavors of hats right now too. So, so yeah, we're we've been working real hard on on the apparel side. People are really wanting to represent us. I mean, that's been that's been another humbling thing too. I was like, man, people, what people like our stuff. I mean, I had, you know, I had Chris Condor, you know, uh, tell us he was like, dude, your branding is some of my favorite branding out there. And you know, when you hear you, you hear people you really really like and respect, mm-hmm. you know, Jimmy said this. A lot of people said the same thing. When you when you have people say that, then you know you're going in the right direction. But it's also humbling. It's also cool that people would want to represent your brand. So we we want to give people some stuff. Now we already have some um, some Yat Gadget. You got that name right? Uh, we got some Yat Gadget the transport flags. We got some trans, kayak transport flags that we'll put on the site. We have those now. Uh, you know that came in the shop, so we'll put those up. And then um, and then we've got you know we've got some other accessories coming out as well pretty soon so yeah we we just we're constantly uh, like i said i've got add we're constantly flipping from one thing to the other and heck yeah uh, coming up new things well but, yeah we're well we're uh we're actually getting over to almost an hour and a half here so we're gonna have to do <laughs> we're we're gonna have to do another episode when you come out hey, with more products as fast here. as he brings out product we could probably wait another three months and have a call 
See, another show. This is what I. Th- this is the direction I want to go with this though, because I, I mean yeah. I want to keep having these guys come back and talk about their products and see. I, I just want to yeah. see the growth, you know, and all these companies that we talk to. Oh yeah, no, that's like shows like this that continue on, like you know John and then like the Z Man and mm-hmm. like yeah. that's the kind of stuff that I like to listen. Oh yeah, to. Z Z Man, uh, Glenn Young. He he's making an appearance in. November, I think again. So that's gonna be fun. So yeah. well, John will have to shoot to get John back on by then. We'll just yeah, see who keeps the count going. Yep. I mean, well, we're I'm going right now. You probably want to have us on weekly, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, this time last year, you know, or, or this time, I say last March, we probably had like four or five products, and now yeah. we've got got well over fifty now. So it's, it, you awesome. know, and then this by the time next March, we're probably going to have, you know, we're probably going to have close to 100 by the time we're done. So, it, it you know, we, we definitely have a very, we're very driven to try to meet as many needs as we can possibly meet. And, and you know, we're getting into the, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep any secrets either. We're getting into the fish finder game. So we've got some fish Ooh. finder stuff. Now there's a couple of exciting people that we might be partnering with to work with and create some things that that you know might have been done before, but not the way that we're going to do it. And so um, there's other options that we we're, we're working on right now. So there's there's a lot to wet the whistle. So yeah, we'd love to come back anytime you want to have us. Heck awesome. yeah! Uh, thanks for coming on the show, John. We uh, we enjoyed it. At least, I, know, I know I enjoyed it at least. Oh yeah. So. Uh, Jimmy, thanks for filling in. I know you wanted to be on this show too, so. Heck yeah, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm down whenever. Heck yeah. With that said, I guess we'll end it here. And uh, everybody have a good day and uh, have a good weekend. Go catch some fish. Stay up.